Good morning. Welcome to Link China with Guotai Joint Futures, your reliable local partner with Global Vision. I'm Renee. Today we have two guests in our studio. They are Kensuki Yatsu, the general manager of Osaka Exchange, and Leo Wan, the senior crude analyst of Guotai Joint Futures. Ken is not in our studio today because of the coronavirus, and he will join us through ABCR. It's about the end of year 2020, and this year, there have been so many uncertainties brought by the global black swan event, the coronavirus epidemic. And major economies all fell off a cliff. It is expected that in the coming year, year 2021, the world will enter a post-COVID-19 era, marked by the recovery of major economies, with China and the US being two large powerhouses. This month, Bank of China issued the Report on Global Asset Allocation Strategy. And in this report, the bank made a three to five year term forecast of the world economy. Commodity was the first choice of global asset allocation. Today we're happy to have guests from two countries, China and Japan, and let's take a look at their prediction of the world commodity market against the backdrop of global economic recovery and inflation expectation. Hello, I'm Kensuke Yazu, and I'm responsible for the business development of a commodity market, in particular labor futures market at Osaka Exchange, OSE. Today, I would like to briefly introduce the landscape of labor futures market and its investment opportunities. Natural labor is a quite unique commodity. At the beginning of its supply chain, rubber is produced as an agricultural material through tapping rubber trees, and at the end, it is used as an industrial material, mainly for manufacturing tires. Players in this supply chain are utilizing rubber features for various purposes such as selling, purchasing, hedging, and dealing. Their activities are strongly associated with an actual economy. For example, in 1970s, when Japan's inflation rate shoot up due to infamous oil crisis, natural labor price also surged up in line with the expansion of inflation. In such case, physical players could head the position of purchasing physical labor with utilizing labor futures markets. In addition, in labor futures markets, there are financial players such as dealers, market makers, and arbitrators as well aiming at getting returns from the market. In a nutshell, labor futures market is an exciting trading venue where many types of investors are joining. Unlike other commodity derivatives, derivatives products, almost all transactions of labor futures are traded at exchanges in Asia. Here is a major exchange having labor futures contract, OSE in Japan, Shanghai Futures Exchange, SHFE, and Shanghai International Energy Exchange, INV, Singapore Exchange, SGX, and Thailand Futures Exchange, TFEX. Here is a long-term chart of OSE RSS3 futures since its listing in 1952. OSE RSS3 futures have more than 70 years history and has been recognized as one of the international benchmark price for natural rubber. What I'd like to emphasize here is that we could learn from the history of its price movement and could estimate what will happen the next under specific economic conditions. Also, it's worth noting that the lower futures price tend to keep longer upward or downward trends, sometimes for more than 10 years. Here is the product spec of OSC Lava Futures contract RSS3 and TSR20. RSS3 is a warehouse delivery while TSR20 is FOB. Both rubber contracts are traded in JPY and their contract months are near less than six contract months. While we are planning to change the contract months from six to 12 in September, 2021. For more details of each product spec, please visit and see our website. Here is the differences of price formula of OSC's RSS and TSR. As OSC's RSS is a warehouse delivery in Japan, as I've said before, and that the theoretical price contains shipping freight, uh, customer custom fees, and the warehouse storage fee. In case of TSR, which is FOB delivery, 
its theoretical price, of course, does not contain these fees. These tables show who is mainly trading lava futures at OSE. Currently, the biggest market players of OSE lava futures are international investors, both physical and financial players, followed by retailers. We suppose these international investors are also trading lava futures at other exchanges in China and Singapore as well, so that attracting these investors through encouraging intermarket arbitrage trading could be one of key factors for the development of our lava futures market. Here is current con market conditions of OIC RSS3 futures. If you look at a chart on upper left hand side, you may see the OIC RSS futures price has decreased in early 2020 due to the impact of COVID-19 on an actual economy. But as China showed a sign of recovering from the pandemic and investors realized that the demand on natural labor would not plunge as initially expected and the producing countries had faced constraints on supplying natural labor. OSE RSS futures price uh, started to soar up from October to November. In addition, as the stocks of RSS3 in OSE's designated warehouses had decreased at a rapid pace since July. This would also be a factor of the big price rally of RSS3 futures in late 2020. We suppose that OSE RSS3 futures price will be affected by a global demand of natural rubber under the future situation of the COVID-19 pandemic, supply side constraints in Thailand, and warehouse stock level in Japan. Global inflation would be a tricky factor and we should carefully watch the impact of current massive financial and monetary easing policies. This chart shows the differences of price movement of lever futures, futures between four exchanges, OSE, Shanghai Futures Exchange, SGX, and INE, debased at 100 as of September 1st. OSE's RSS3 represents a red line, and its market volatility seems higher than other markets during a big rally from the mid of October to early November. This price tendency might be a tricky trading factor for some investors, especially physical players, but also this means these remain potential after opportunities at OSE's lava futures market. Following two pages, Major spec differences between exchanges and trading volume and open interest of each exchange uh, references. And uh, please see it later if you are interested. And for more information about uh, our sorry about the product spec or statistics of our markets, please visit our website from here. We are also providing daily and weekly reports regarding our derivatives and commodity markets, including live features to brokers. Please ask Gota Joan if you are interested in receiving these reports. Please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions or requests regarding OS Lava Features Market. Thank you very much for your attention, and I do hope to meet you once the COVID, uh, current COVID-19 situation becomes normal. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. The rubber price rally reflects the picking up of auto selling, which is a sign of industrial recovery. And this will also drive up the consumption of oil and gas. So Leo, what's your take on this? Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. Today, we want to talk about what happened in the China's community market and how we think about the crude oil. And first of all, we can see this two graph should us the global commodity market, especially for the China's community market has arched in a wave of general rise in expectation of the future economic recovery and inflation. We can see that after the United States, China, and other countries have successfully announced the lending of the vaccines, the market performance is somewhat over optimistic. And especially in the trade market, where the 
academic situation is almost completely under control, people just think the bad thing is the past. And uh, for the futures market, we can see the ferrous metals have experienced an extremely wave of rise. But when the market found that the Europe and America encountered a second outbreak of the coronavirus and the new coronavirus variant was discovered in Britain, the trend of rising was largely interrupted. And the global commodities this week confronted a relatively large callback. We can see that there are still many uncertain questions in this market right now, like um, when the vaccine will be fully used. Can the coronavirus pandemic be brought under control in a short time? Is the vaccine too effective to the variant virus? And the, the most important thing is will all the will all the central banks continue its loosening policy in the future? We can see this two graph just show that what happened in the China's market right now. And uh, for all these questions and other related topics will become the hot spots for the market training and the spe speculation. Speculation. And uh, after after the baptism of the global marketing freedom under the coronavirus outbreak in 2020, I believe everyone should be full of hope for 2021 for an anticipated recovery of the global economic after the epidemic is under control as well as a relative, relatively, relatively moderate inflation. And uh, we can see this expectation is quite strong in the trans market. Everyone thinks it will be happened. The, the response to the coronavirus pandemic by Chinese government in 2020 and the, the rapid economic recovery afterwards have been regarded as the templated of the economic recovery after the global epidemic is under control. Many of the changes in the economic data is likely to be observed in overseas markets, such as commercial vehicle sales data, which have a high correlation with the microeconomy. And uh, it's also closely related to what we discussed today, right now. The recovery of sales data of excavators, construction vehicles, and heavy trucks is often regarded as a leading indicator of economic restart. We can see these two graphs. It showed us how many commercial vehicles we sold in China's market in 2020, and how about the diesel consumption. And in the past few months, we can clearly see the rapid and the substantial recovery of sales data for all commercial vehicles in China. And at the same time, what we can also see is the rapid recovery of the industry in China's economy, especially for the manufacturing industry. This rebound of engineering vehicle sales data has led to the recovery of the tire demand and boosted the consumption of the nature rubber. Of course, this raising demand gives support to the price of rubber. We can see it from the Shanghai exchange, Shanghai future exchange, the, the rubber's price is going to high. And at the same time, it's also stimulated China's diesel consumption. And we think it, it's generating support to China's crude oil price. We can also see it from the Shanghai crude oil futures. It's much it's pricing much higher than WTI and Brunt during the March to May, I think. And uh, I think after the epidemic, China's diesel consumption rebounded so significantly that it has even overperformed the previous years, which is largely benefited from the vast amount of sale and usage of commercial vehicles. And we believe that the diesel consumption is a reflection of recovery of manufacturing industry during the economic recovery. As a result, the price and crude oil will be firmly supported. We can see what happened in the Chinese market. The PMI's data is going to high and the, the, the diesel's consumption is, goes well. And, uh, but however, there remain a question of 
weather situation can be replicated in overseas market. We think there are still some problems. Uh, you know, the trans trans market is quite different from overseas. So, uh, we we don't think that everything will go well with the Chinese way. Because on the one hand, China's epidemic situation was controlled at an early stage, and the spread of overseas epidemic has resulted in some overseas orders falling back to China. The global market demand for all kinds of consumer goods simultaneously poured into China, making China's export data con continuously reach new record highs, we can see it from the graph. And uh, on the other hand, China's investment in infra infrastructure construction and its subsidy policy for industrial enterprise to help the, this company to restart quickly. All these changes have well supported China's economic recovery in the industrial sector. In, this, in the case of general recovery in overseas market, it might be rather difficult for them to receive the same treatment as the Chinese market. And therefore, we previously pre prefers that the general recovery of overseas market may not be reflected in growth of diesel consumption. Um, but we still hold optimistic expectations for diesel consumption in the global market next year, um, but we think uh, still some problems should be served. And compared to the diesel, aviation fuel consumption is probably going to experience a slow recovery, but there could be uh, explosive growth at a center at a center point of time. It's likely to be a dramatic change once the global epidemic has ended and the isolation policy of the states are cancelled. There will be retaliatory growth in international aviation market, which has been depressed for long, and uh, thus it will promote the recovery of the crude oil price, we think. And all in all, we believe that with the support of the economic recovery and the inflation, expectations, the global commodity market will have better performance. We hope all investors may pay more attention to the commodity market. And at the present, Chinese financial market is increasingly paying attention to the trading and the research for the commodity and the futures. We can see the two graphs shown us the Chinese market is going quite well in the future market, and we believe that there will be more trading opportunities in this market in the future. And uh, it's all my share. Thank you. Thanks, Leo. Recovery takes time, but the vaccination process has finally started, and it is hoped that things will feel normal again next year. In the Bank of China report I mentioned at the very beginning of the program, it says that emerging markets will play a bigger role in global asset allocation. And we can expect more trading opportunities in these markets with huge potential. And we will keep you updated of what's happening in these markets. Also, in this special episode, on behalf of Guotai Zhuan Futures, I would like to say Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you all. Thank you for watching today's show. See you next time. See you. Japan Exchange Group, JPX, where the world of markets starts. Cultivating an ever-growing multi-asset range and services, we at JPX Group continue to thrive building on our rich heritage by matching tradition with the future. Best-of-breed technology, coupled with vibrant and deep liquidity, established Tokyo as one of the most prominent financial centers in the world. As a market operator, JPX Group is comprised of three core markets – Osaka Exchange, Tokyo Stock Exchange, and Tokyo Commodity Exchange. Osaka Exchange, widely known as OSE, is also the birthplace of the world's first organized futures exchange. Together with TOCOM, 
These two exchanges form the derivatives arm of JPX. We are building solutions by turning ideas into opportunities. Since 1988, for over 30 years, Nikkei 225 Futures, a stock index futures contract composed of 225 selected stocks listed on Asia's largest stock exchange, TSE, continued to trade across the globe as one of the most globally recognized stock index futures benchmark. In addition to the Nikkei 225 Futures, Topix Futures, Japanese government bond futures, gold futures, and other various futures and options are listed on OSE, providing a rich universe of products for your trading and hedging needs. Embracing technological change, OSE's derivatives market volumes are growing steadily. With an ever-increasing universe of market players and over 200 million contracts traded per year, Nikkei 225 Mini Futures became the most actively traded equity index futures contract in Asia. Domestic as well as international participation has been growing continuously over recent years. Since July 2020, investors are able to trade gold, platinum, rubber, and other commodity products along with Nikkei 225 Futures at OSE. TOCOM, the energy derivatives arm of JPX, lists Asia's major index future for oil, Dubai crude oil futures, and electricity futures, based on the Japanese electricity market, which is one of the world's largest and most promising electricity markets. JGate, OSC and TOCOM's trading system based on NASDAQ's Genium iNet trading system, realizes world-class processing speed and functionalities offering best-of-breed technology and ease of access to our diverse range of market participants. JGate supports both day and night sessions, allowing diverse investors across the globe to access and trade seamlessly across all time zones. Ever since its inception, the night session has enjoyed an immense success and take-up by both domestic as well as international traders, where over time, the participation ratio grew to 50%. OSE derivatives market is one of the most diversified and globalized markets today. Join us where the world meets Asia.